Self-preservation is a natural and carnal instinct. By many scientists, it has been labeled the fight-or-flight response. For as long as nation-states have existed, this fight-or-flight response has decided many foreign policy objectives and actions. In 2001, the World Trade Center, the economic hub of America, was destroyed by a single swift act of terrorism. Few times have Americans been so desperately driven to avenge and to advance peace, freedom, and democracy. This terrible day rang with the cries of patriots screaming for retribution and justice. This infamous day rang with the cries of families ripped from their loved ones. And this day rang with the cry of men, women, businessmen, and politicians alike demanding military action. Yet now, after nearly 11 long years of war, the great nation we call home is riddled with discord, strife, and doubt. The debate rages on and questions the justification of American military actions and intervention in Middle Eastern affairs. Pastor Stephen Brown says what many conservatives were scared to say. The war on Iraq is an unjust and evil war. Only a few of the bravest conservatives were willing to espouse such strong anti-war sentiments. During the long aftermath of that terrible tragedy we now call simply 9-11, most anti-war beliefs were marginalized as anti-American and anti-patriotic. Yet the irony is that now those once marginalized beliefs have quickly become the outspoken majority. Gallup polls found in an analysis of American sentiments regarding the war on terror that a shocking 81% of Americans believed that the U.S. intervention in Iraq had made prospects for democracy in the Middle East either no better or worse than before. The majority of United States citizens believed in 2006 that the war was not justified. For the longest time, people believed that we were going to improve the chances for democracy in the Middle East. But the war drug on with no improvement. The country became discouraged, and currently, according to a CBS News poll, a majority of Americans, 53%, say that the United States should not be involved in Afghanistan. Only 36% say the U.S. is doing the right thing in fighting there. Something is happening with our society. What we once believed was the proper course of action is no longer condonable for the majority. The American people have come to believe that it is no longer worth it. Our people are asking if the loss of American life is really worth the lack of response from the people we are attempting to help. The war on terror has become a vicious echo of the Vietnam War. The United States troops have moved into countries to fight for peace, freedom, and democracy. Yet, much like the Vietnam War, many of the locals believe that our troops should not be there. In a speech published on July 30th of 2008, Dr. Stephen Cole stated several different polls which all said the same thing. 73% of Iraqi nationals said that they opposed the presence of the coalition forces in Iraq. 61% said that the presence of the U.S. forces in Iraq is making the security situation in Iraq worse. In February of 2008, 73% of Iraqis felt that the U.S. forces were of no use to them. 63% claimed that the U.S. Coalition for Democracy was actually harmful to the case instead of beneficial. These shocking statistics were actually up from 2006 and 2007, which found that 7 in 10 wanted U.S.-led forces out according to a timetable of two years or less. About a year later, 7 in 10 favored a timetable of one year or less. Also, in late 2006, the United States State Department conducted polls in numerous major Iraqi cities and consistently found about two-thirds calling for the U.S. to leave. On March 19, 2003, George W. Bush and the United States military invaded the sovereign nation of Iraq, a nation that had never attacked the United States, a nation that had never threatened to attack the United States, a nation that had never murdered a single American citizen. The question that those who affirm the United States' actions as justified are faced with is the question of self-defense. The British Parliament even posed the question in an open session as, was Iraq's WMD sufficient to justify a preemptive attack which would sit within the right to self-defense? Many of those who favor military action in the Middle East are clear supporters that it is and was the right decision to make. Ayad Alawai, interim prime minister of Iraq, stated that we Iraqis know that America have made and continue to make enormous sacrifices to liberate Iraq, to assure Iraqi freedom. I have come here to thank you and to promise you that your sacrifices are not in vain. Your decision to go to war in Iraq was not an easy one, but it was the right one. 
A soldier who chose to remain anonymous stationed at Fort Jackson said that, Serving for me, it's not hard. It's an honor. For this soldier and many of his co-soldiers, fighting for the freedom of others is a privilege, not an unjustified cause. In interviews with about 10 soldiers, when asked if the wars were justified, they all replied quite similarly. They said that they don't understand what we are doing in Afghanistan. And they questioned our motivations, especially after Osama bin Laden has been killed. We have to bring the, the ideal of democracy and freedom to the country and show them that the American people are not here to, to rule Iraq. The Pentagon might keep up to 24,000 troops in combat beyond their tour. I know our, our numbers in the military have gone down. You know, they talk about retention. You know, never really expected to be deployed this long. I don't think anybody did. I don't have any clue as to why we're still in Iraq. I will, I will not let anyone send me back over there to kill other poor people, especially when they pose no threat to me. In my country. It is claimed that in an effort to save ourselves, we save the citizens of another country. Our seemingly selfish action has been turned by those who condone our actions into a humanitarian effort. Yes, the United States began with the policy of self-defense, but continued to uphold freedom and democracy. It was the perceived threat of Saddam Hussein and his weapons of mass destruction that brought many people to the belief that American actions were justified. Jack Spencer, research fellow at the Heritage Foundation, said that on September 11, 2001, the Taliban ruled Afghanistan and Saddam Hussein ruled Iraq. Today, neither is in power, and the United States is a safer place for that reason. Military actions in the Middle East have been justified through the concept of self-defense. The fact that we saved ourselves and saved the Middle East from sure destruction at the cost of a terrorist life is totally justifiable in the eyes of those who support the war. Thomas H. Enrickson, a senior fellow at Stanford's Hoover Institution, claims that the U.S. must fight on. He began his article saying that the 10-year war can be lost, but it cannot be won in the conventional sense. So he continues that American actions have proven tragic, but we must fight on with a different strategy. This viewpoint is becoming incredibly popular with the pro-intervention beliefs. They believe that our strategy is flawed not the basic motives of our actions. They attribute all this strategy to the lack of forethought and flawed planning, but not a flawed motivation. Those who condone the war do not always condone the execution of our plans, but approve of the motivation behind those plans. To them, it is the self-defense and it is the salvation of the Middle East that justifies our actions, not the military's actions themselves. Now, our nation has yet to decide whether military actions were condonable. It is those who see the war as a good thing that are in the small yet very vocal minority? Or is it the majority, the 30 soldiers who returned their award medals due to a belief that a war was based on lies and failed policy? Are they the ones that are correct? There is no correct, but our great home is still filled with debate, tension, and anxiety that may never be healed. Self-preservation drives us all. It drives country to protect themselves. Is it always just? Is it always right? Should we always follow our gut instinct? The choice is yours, but know that your instinct will never leave you. We wage a war to save a civilization itself. We did not seek it, but we will fight it, and we will prevail.